So hello all. Today we'll be looking at a question given in gate 2018. Which of the following statements is false? Option A. Context-free grammars can be used to specify both lexical and syntax rules. Option B. Type checking is done before parsing. Option C. High-level language programs can be translated to different intermediate representations. Option D. Arguments to a function can be passed to the program stack. The Amputal video reference is lecture 2 introduction. The course name is Compiler Design by Professor Shantanu Chattopadhyay from IIT Kharagpur. Now let us look at the useful data before solving this question. Now we first must first need to understand what are the phases of a compiler or the input code that you send to a compiler, what phases does it go through? First of all, the input code goes to something called a preprocessor, which removes the white space and also does macro expansion. Like if you have written hash defined and also header file expansion, the hash includes that you have written, it includes the header file in the code. After that, it goes to something called a lexical analysis. The lexical analysis reads the program character by character and divides it into a stream of tokens. The stream of tokens are fit to the syntax analyzer, syntax analyzer who uses something called a context-free grammar to generate a parse tree. Once the parse tree is, uh, parse tree is generated, it goes through the semantic analysis phase where it is semantically verified using some actions. Now the output of the semantic analysis is a semantically verified parse tree. After the semantic analysis, the code is converted into an intermediate code. Uh, it could be three address code or uh, SSA single static single assignment form or tree based forms. And after which the intermediate code is fed to the code optimizer to perform some machine dependent and machine independent optimizations. And then the final code is generated. Right? So you have the preprocessed input code, goes to the lexical analysis generates a stream of tokens, goes to the syntax analysis, generates a parse tree, goes to the semantic analysis, generates a parse tree which is semantically verified, then it goes to the intermediate code generation which generates the intermediate code. Then the code optimizer performs some machine independent and dependent optimizations and then the target code is generated using code generation. Now all these phases work hand in hand by using something called a symbol table. A symbol table is an important data structure that is used to store the information about the symbols that you are used in the program. And then something called error handler to handle errors. Now uh, let's look at the analysis phase of the compiler or the front end of the compiler and what is the output as we saw now like XRISS produces a stream of tokens and the grammar that is used to specify to generate this stream of tokens is regular grammar. Regular grammar you can use to generate uh, regular expressions the, uh, and that can be realized by finite state automata. In syntax analysis, the output is a parse tree and it uses a context free grammar and the, which is realized by a push down automata machine. Semantic analysis generates a semantically verified parse tree, uses a context sensitive grammar and realized by a linear bounded automata. Now, the there is something called a power of a grammar. So regular grammar can be used to represent regular languages, right? Context-free grammars can be used to generate context-free languages. Context-sensitive grammar can be used to uh, represent context-sensitive language, and Turing grammar can be used to represent recursively enumerable language. Right? Uh, now, whatever you can generate using regular grammar, you can also do the same using context-free grammar. Whatever you can generate using context free grammar can also be generated using context sensitive grammar. Whatever you can generate with context sensitive grammar can also be generated using Turing grammar. So we can say that Turing grammar is the most powerful because it can be used to represent any of the uh, grammar, context sensitive, context free or regular. Context sensitive can represent context free and regular. Context free grammar can represent regular grammar as well. Now, with this knowledge, let us look at one more thing called activations. When I call a function, an activation record is created and it is pushed into the stack. The activation record stores the function parameters and other local variables used in the function. It also stores some more information about the function call like return address. Right? So, 
So, with this information, let us solve the question. Now, we'll look at each statement, and with the knowledge we gained just now, we'll try to find out which is correct and which is wrong. The question says we have to find out which of the statements is false. Now, option A says context free grammar can be used to specify both lexical and syntax rules. It is true because, as I said, lexical analysis, lexical rules are specified using regular grammar. Syntax rules are specified using context free grammar. But context free grammar can also be used to specify lexical rules because it is a higher power. So, option A is correct, it's not false. Next is type checking. Now, first we need to understand what is type checking. Now, when I give a code and you are using some variable, let's say A, it needs to find whether that A that we are trying to use conforms to the type of A, right? So, let's say if I if I am doing A plus B in a code, A is of type string, B is of type int, and the language doesn't know A plus B is what because one is string, one is int. So, it will it will give a type checking error, right? So, when we are trying to use A. We need to know the context of A or the place where it is de declared so that we can know that oh, this A is of type int, oh, this A is of type string, right? So, this is done during the semantic analysis phase because that is when we are context sensitive. So, that is why type checking should be done after parsing rather than before parsing. So, option B is false, which is correct. But just for completeness, let us see the other two options as well. Option C says, high level language programs can be translated to different intermediate representations. Sure. So, once your semantically analysis parse tree is generated, you can use any uh, intermediate representation to represent your program. You can translate your program to any intermediate representation. Then option D says, Arguments to a function can be passed to the program stack. True, this is true because as I said, when I create a function, when I call a function, an activation record is pushed into the stack, and the stack contains the and the activation record contains the local variables and the arguments of the function. So, option D is true. So, I hope you all get this. Thank you.